Hey, Stan. Are you there? Stanley. What do you have? Oh, in a pint. Oh, oh, well, well, just having a minute, you know. Good luck to you. Well, Oof. where is he? Who? Me dog. Oh, it'll just take him for a walk, you know. A walk? Oh. On the day of the big race? Oh, around the block. It'll get his muscles going, you know. Oh, I suppose it'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, tell me, has he eaten well? Ah, oh, he's off my flaming bed. Ah, never mind. Never mind. You won't regret it, I promise you. Huh? By this time tomorrow night, We'd all be on dram buoy shandies. I'll get it up there. No, 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 not yet. Why not? Tactics. Tactics? Yeah, well, what I mean, like, is uh, you and I, we're going to be all right because we're going to be able to put our few pennies on up at the track. But then we're only a couple of cogs in a much bigger operation altogether. Oh. I don't want to mention any names, oh. but there's a couple of very big lads involved in this one. Huh? Oh, aye. And if I was as much as to be seen with a dog until just before the race, you never know. Oh. Someone might smell a rat. Do you know what I mean? All right. So, uh, I'll see you later, Stan. Right. Oh, and remember, yeah. mum's the word. Oh, uh, don't worry, son. Uh, uh. Oh, Mum, lovely, here we are. Oh, here we are. I'm All right, love. Oh, yes, yeah, it's never any trouble for me in this one. We're what you might call very sympathetic, old me and you, can't we, love? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are. You go to your Uncle Stanley while your Auntie Hilda gets the dinner out of the oven. Come on, I kid. You've got to make a bob or two for me, aren't you? How far did you go, then? Oh, just as far as the corner shop. <laughs> and you know what? what? He was as good as gold all the time we was in there. <laughs> he's going to be out the front there, aren't you, son, with that head right in front there? <laughs> hey, come smells good. Yeah. What's that? Get yourself some fish and chips. What about? Oh, and while you're passing Dave Smith's, put that on Duke for me. Huh? I wouldn't like him to think I haven't got complete faith in his athletic facilities. Oh, Come on, Chunky. <laughs> Here we are then. Hey, hello. And tell Sue to get her shoes on. Yeah, come on, love. Come on, at this rate, we'll be going home time before we get there. All right, I'm not taking them to school like something that's fallen off a flitting. Let me see. Oh, your, your nails are as if you've been All right, look, so put them in the bath tonight, but let's go, shall like we? A kid with a new Do you toy. want me to run you there or don't you? Do we have a choice? Damn, damn, damn. Now I what? forgot my watch. Hang on a minute, will you? Oh, it's a waste of time to comb your hair, isn't it? Have you had enough, then? Ah, oh, don't they feed you proper in your house? Never mind, Auntie Hilda's made plenty. Just wait there, love. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, Chuck. I just thought I'd better tell you. What? Gilt edge have dropped another point. Oh. <laughs> hey, that smells good. Oh, yeah. Nothing but the best for Duke. <laughs> My old fella used to keep greyhounds, you know. Oh, aye. Aye, my mum reckons he never got over it when he found out I only had two legs instead of four. Ah. <laughs> aye, you know, nothing my old chap didn't used to know about dog racing. He could stop them and start them practically at will. How do you mean you'll stop them and start them? Oh, there are a lot of that used to go on in dog racing, Hilda. Yes, of course, that was in those days. I mean, they're a lot stricter now. But then, oh, my jingo. If you knew that your dog was a good thing, you give it a good feed before a race and then put your money on something else. Oh. A good feed? To stop it, you know. Oh. Well, what do you think then? I still don't like the colour. Oh, come on, love. I mean, I know it's not a Rolls Royce convertible, but it's a snip at 150 quid. We're the North Star Oyster now, what with the White Scar Caves, the Truffle Bowling. Mm. Probably cold. Ah, oh, what's more for luck? Funny, it was running all right this morning. Yeah.
I suppose you do realise, Councillor, that if we weren't pouring our money into this place every week, we could be in Spain next year with our buckets and speeds. I don't want to be in Spain. Oh? I might end up in one of them posh hotels with the unfinished swimming pool. Oh. Well, that's it, mate. How would you like to make your fame and fortune in a little Yankee with me? No, thanks, mate. My flaming looks bad enough already without mating it with yours. Oh, well, please yourself. But when I have that interview on television, don't say I didn't give you the chance, eh? Ha ha. Come on, darling, cheer up. It's our money we're losing, not yours. <laughs> Hello, Stan. I do. Uh, I suppose you have seen that notice up there. Right. The one that says customers aren't allowed to bring their own food in here. Go on. Good day, with that. Why? I want some more money on that dog, you know. I've told you you've got to see the bookie at the track. You're oh. not still wasting your money on that Irish bloodhound, are you? The one you lumbered with. That's my business. Look, Stanley, do yourself a favour. Back against it, and then at least you've got the chance of not being licked by one dog. You reckon? Well, look, it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, do yourself a favour. If, if... Maybe. If he thought that that dog stood a cat in hell's chance of winning, he wouldn't have left it with you all week, would he? Maybe he's no choice, mate. Uh, mm. mate. Mm. Tactics. Tactics? Mm. If you've got a secret weapon, you don't put it in the shop window, do you? You keep it in the wraps, don't you? Till you're ready to strike. Please yourselves. We don't say I didn't give you the tip. You don't think for one of his life he could be right, do you? No. no. Trouble? No, 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 Stanley. No, I always do this in my best shirt before I go to school. It's a marvellous invention when you think about it, the motor car. What's up? I don't know. The engine just keeps cutting out. Will I have a look? Yeah, I'll have to sell. Me too, Bob. Oh, no, I'll get you. Oh, yes, yes, love. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a couple of quid for myself, too, you know. Oh. Well, I mean, you've got to speculate to accumulate, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, love. <laughs> Stan? What? Uh, if, um, for some reason, like, uh, Duke couldn't run tonight, say... Couldn't run? Yeah, owing to unforeseen circumstances or something, well, uh, I suppose we could get us money back. Get us money back? No. Oh. Why? Oh, uh, just curious, joking. Where is he? Oh, he's gone upstairs, love, to have a little lie down. Are you all right, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's all right. He's just uh, gathering his strength together <laughs> for what lies ahead. Hmm. Let it go. <laughs> And again. Hey, did you actually pay real money for this thing or did they just bribe it and drag it away? I'm sorry, Ken, I can't do any more. Oh, that's okay, Land. Thanks anyway. Can I make a positive suggestion? Go on then. Why don't we go and drown our sorrows with a couple of pints of Newton and Ridley's and then see if Billy Walker or somebody else who knows so much about these things can do out for you? Well, not for me, thanks. I'm late for school already. Well, shall I tell Billy you want him as well? No, no, it's all right, then. I'll sort it out myself this evening. Do you think you'll get a job easily, then? 
Well, I've never had much trouble in the past, anyway. Well, why, what about Miami Modes? Didn't you used to work at Miami Modes? Yeah, but I don't think I'd go back there somehow. Anyway, how did you know I worked at Miami Modes? Oh, Doc Greenell, she's a friend of yours, isn't she? Well, what you might call lapsed for the moment. She spoke well of you. Ah, well, she flaming well up. Well, oh, it's a long story, love. How to bitter, Len? Two pints of bitter, love, and he's paying. Oh, whatever these gorgeous damsels are in. Hi, are you? Who's your friend? Hello, Hello, darling. You uh, wouldn't be wanting a plumber at the moment, would you? I'm sorry, no offence, love, but I don't think you're the right shape to get under the uh, slop stone. Oh, well, that's another one I cross off my list. <laughs> Right, Stan. Oh. Are you ready? Aye. The joke's upstairs. I'll get him. Hang on a second. Right. This is our good. Yeah. yeah, come on. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on, here up. That one's dropped off. Oh. I'll go get him. Right. You're not, are you? I've told you. Two quid. Two quid a piece, me and Len. On that dog, a Stan Ogden. That's right. <laughs> Well, what's so funny about that? It's got four legs and a rudder, hasn't it? I'm sorry, Ray, but that's not all it's got now, either. How is it? Oh, I expect we could bring him round in about 24 hours with a couple of shots of Benzedrin. Flaming stew. Yes, Chuck. And we have to have chips and fish. Yes, Chuck. Well, he's, he's very fond of Stew, is Duke. Flaming Nora. Hello. Hello. Well, I got the car started again, but uh, the engine keeps cutting out still. That's handy, isn't it? Then we're the laughing stock of the street every time we go for a run. Oh, come on, love. No, you never even bothered to ask what sort of car I wanted. You just went out and there it was. Oh, I told you it was meant to be a surprise. Oh, grow up. You don't buy cars as a surprise. You talk about them first. Find out what you can afford. Look, I'm not daft, you know. I didn't exactly go into this with my eyes closed. Didn't you? Of course not. You didn't even get it from a proper dealer. You just picked it out of the paper. We've got no guarantee, nothing. For all we know, it might even be stolen. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm not Look, you get a far stupid. better dealer buying a deal, better bargain buying privately than you do from a dealer. Oh, I see. We were just unlucky, though. Well, look, this happens to be a little fault with the engine, that's all. Anyone who knows what they're doing will probably put it right in two minutes. Yes, exactly. Anybody Look, love, love let's get one thing it. straight, shall we? It's you who was going on about getting a car, not me. Oh, I see. Now it's all my fault. I didn't say it was your fault. I just said I bought the car for you. Well, you can take it back for all right. me well, and I will. get the money back I will. before anything else goes wrong. Oh, for goodness sake, cheer up, Mr. Ogden. You're flying the way all me custom. It wrap yourself round that, see if it does anything for you. Yeah. Did your dog go down then? It didn't even work with him. It was withdrawn. Was, was oh, I see. Hey, hasn't been anybody around here asking for things, then? You mean like your elder? No, 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 like fellas like, you know. What sort of fellas? Well, it's just a bit, I don't know what they look like, you know. Oh. But listen, if, 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 do come and ask him. Yeah. Um, tell him I'm not here. He'd be fine with you, eh? Tell him you're not here. Yeah. He'd know you are here. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh. Hello. 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 Love you're back early tonight. Oh, what's the good of being your own boss if you don't have the fringe benefits? Well, I'm afraid your tea's not quite ready yet. Oh, uh, well, can you hurry it up? I've got to go back. I'll have a pint of beer while I'm waiting. Right, then. Hello. Hello, Billy. Hello. Oh, Alan told me to tell you. Uh, yeah, what? <coughs> he's stopping on to finish off a job, bit of a rush job. He'll I see you later on. I see. Well, in that case, I'll have a gin and orange, love. Well, what's the trouble then? Well, you tell me. Huh? I didn't even know you had a car. Oh, I didn't until yesterday. Oh, I see. Yeah, now I'm beginning to wish I hadn't again. Oh? Yeah, Val wants me to take it back. You'd be lucky, you know. Exactly what the chap said when I tried to about half an hour ago. Private sale? Yeah. Well, looks as though you're stuck with it, isn't it? Yeah, I'm afraid so. What are the symptoms? Well, the engine keeps cutting out. I'm sorry, I can't tell any more than that. When it comes to the inside of a car, I'm a very good trumpet player. 
Every man to his trade. Yeah. Well, come on, let's have a look at it. What, you mean you're looking at it now? Well, why not? Oh, great, thanks. And what about the hound of the flipping Baskervilles, or is that a rude question? No, it's a slight mishap. Oh, why? Ligament, you know, the leg. Yes, I know. Tommy Deakin told me. I've heard about it. Ah, yes, I've heard about it. Stanley, far be it from me to come <coughs> between a man and his wife, but don't you think Hilda should be put down painless? Don't mention her. Don't mention that name to me. <coughs> flipping stew. Hey, don't be too hard on Mr. Ogden, Len. I mean, he's got problems. I oh, know, I've seen her. No. Tommy Deakin's on at him about the dog. Oh, I? He's convinced they're after him. Who? The mafia. <laughs> You're joking. Well, that's what I said, but Mr. Ogden won't have it. Oh, it can be very cruel if he puts his mind to it, can Tommy Deakin? <laughs> Ah, oh, he's a very frightened man, this Stanley Ogden. Well, well, well. <laughs> hey, Ray! Well? Well? Well, what did he say? Well, would you like it in the original Anglo-Saxon, or should I give you the abridged version? He wouldn't take it back. That was the abridged version. I see. Sorry, love. So you should be. <coughs> Honestly, for somebody with letters after his name, you aren't off a dope sometimes. Well, it's part of my charm, isn't it? No, it is not. So now we're stuck with a car that stops every five yards. Nope. Well, I stuck with the car. What does that mean? I took it down and and he fixed it for me. I see. And how much is that going to cost? Nothing. He wouldn't take a penny. Oh, well, I suppose that's something. So what I thought was, hmm. you go downstairs and ask Mrs. Sharple if she'll babysit for an hour. Yeah. I will start the engine. Yeah. And then I know just the place, up the cup bank, where we could park the car, and get what must be the definitive view of Weatherfield Power Station by moonlight. There's no moon tonight. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you saw him then, did you, Stan? Who? That fellow was in here looking for you. No. Oh. Well, uh, he, uh, I don't suppose it was very important. He's sure to come in again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, look, don't worry about it, no. no I'll, uh, I'll nip down and uh, see if I can sort it out. OK, right, fine. Who's that, though? Oh, just another dissatisfied customer. Look, if anybody wants me, I'm down the garage, right? Good. Your service partner? <laughs> Did you see him then, Squire? Who? Who? The fellow who's looking for you. Great big fellow with a coat hanger still in his coat. Oh. What he's looking for, you know, he looks like an all-in wrestler, one of them, you know. Asking for me? Yeah, that's right. Never mind, Stanley. I told him where you lived. You didn't, did you? What's the matter, Stanley? What's up then, kid? Oh, I don't know. Monday again, I suppose. Oh, Cheer up. In a few hours, it'll be Tuesday. Oh, and a fat lot of difference that'll make. What's the matter? I don't know. It's just doing the same things all the time. Oh, no. She's not still on about that, is she? Well, it's true, isn't it? Look, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get some more drinks and while I'm away, just change the record, eh? I've heard this twice tonight already. War cry? And why not? You come here every week, do you? Thank you very much. My pleasure. I, uh, I say, playmates, how would you like to go somewhere you've never ever been before? Tonight? Aye. Where? Well, I'm afraid I can't tell you that till we get there, but it'll be a giggle. Well, I'm game. All right. Oh, where are you hang on a minute, go. What now? I've already got a date tonight. So bring him along, he can have a giggle too. All right. Good. Here, improve your mind. Now then, smarty pants. Go away. Not on your life. I said go away. Not till I get me just desserts. Eh? I'll have that quid you took out of the sideboard to put on that rotten dog, thank you very much. Just not your day, somehow is it, Stanley? Oh, look, I'll get the quid for him and get some lunch. Oh, cry? No. It's the hard working late tonight, then? Yes, no, but still it's time and a half after all, isn't it? <laughs> Tell me, how is he uh, adjusting to his changed status? Well, the work isn't quite in the manner to which he was accustomed, but after all, you know, I've got a little da garage down by the side of the canal, but it is, it is a start, isn't it? Yes, well, needs must when the devil drives. <laughs> Oh, 
I know. What's going on then? What do you mean? Well, I've just had Harris on the phone. He's gone flaming mad. <laughs> he reckons that when he called at eight o'clock to pick the car up, you sent him off with a flea in his ear. Well, I wouldn't put it as strongly as that. Well, what happened? Well, he got a bit stroppy when he came in for his car. It wasn't ready. I told him to come back later. Well, why wasn't it ready? Well, I got tied up with something else I was doing. Well, what? Ken Barlow was having a bit of trouble with the car he just bought, so I went and had a look at it. Ken Barlow? Well, I looked at it and uh, it took a little longer than I thought. That's very sporting of you. And how much did that bring in? What do you mean? Well, how much was it worth? 25 quid? Oh, that's what Harris is paying for the job you left to do it. Come on, Billy, I wouldn't charge Ken Barlow anything. You wouldn't what? Well, I did nothing. It's very good business practice to do a favour here and there. But don't give me a lecture on business practice. I may not have the benefit of your vast experience, but I'm not exactly wet behind the ears, you know. I'm not giving you a lecture on business practice, and I never suggested that you were wet behind the ears. And what sort of business practice is that? Dropping work on a 25 quid rush job to, to, to do an old pal's act for nothing. So goodwill isn't important, eh? Finishing jobs on time when you've promised them, that's what's important. And building this business up with money, that is important too. Well, if you hadn't done a disappearing act suddenly at opening time, perhaps we wouldn't have had this problem at all. If it's any of your business, I made four calls tonight. Working calls about graft, balancing books. Look, I told you when you started, there's only one boss here and that's me. That means that I come as I like and I go as I like. And if you don't like the arrangement, you know what you can do about it, don't you? Well, now, if you put it like that, you're exactly right. I know exactly what I can do about it. 